Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. This is Pastor Sessom. Amen. Senior Pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside at 16681 Wood Road. Amen. And that's in Southern California. Amen. And the zip code is 92508. Amen. We've been coming on, amen, this month. Amen. Every uh, day of every weekday, that's Monday through Friday, speaking uh, and teaching concerning healing and wellness. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yesterday we learned, amen, that about the power of consistency. Amen. And utilizing the word of God as we pray and believe God for healing. If you recall, we saw, taught that Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And that's found, amen, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 11. Amen, glory to God. We also learned and we understand that God bruised Jesus. Amen. The Bible says it was the will of the Lord to bruise him, to put him to grief. And since Jesus, uh, God made him sick, he carried all of our uh, sicknesses. We really today, as believers, don't have to carry it anymore. Amen. Glory to God. And then last but not least, we dealt with the power of consistency. Amen. Glory to God. We have to be consistent as we speak forth the word of God, as we believe God. Amen. Glory to God. As in, in the name of Jesus, we learned in Colossians, it told in 1 and 23, it said to be to continue in faith. Amen. Glory to God. In John 8, 31 through 32, he said, if we continued in his word, then we are his disciples indeed. Amen. And we would know the truth and the truth would make us free. Praise God. So we understand that it takes discipline. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then in Colossians 4 and 2, it told us to continue in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we understand that there is a revelation. Amen. That God that, that comes to individuals who are constant or consistent in using the word of God. Hallelujah. That others just don't receive. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So today, amen. And, oh yeah, we mentioned diligence. I want, I want to forget that. We mentioned the, 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 the need to be diligent. Amen. Glory to God too. Amen. Be attentive to the word of God. And we gave you some synonym for diligence. We said industrious, hardworking, meticulous, rigorous, thorough, attentive, studious, persevering, constant, painstaking, careful, tenacious, zealous, committed, and busy. Amen. Glory to God. And so we want to continue, amen, along that the line of teaching concerning utilizing the word of God in our prayers. Amen. So praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, we want to ask you to turn to the book of Romans. Amen. Chapter 10. And while you're getting there, I'll go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for this day is the day you made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy and your anointing upon us to teach and to preach your word this morning. Bless those, oh God, hallelujah, that are watching, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they would receive, believe, and have faith to act on your word. Now we come against every foe to faith, any spirit that would try to hinder us, we rebuke and cast down in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for good success in this endeavor. We thank you, Father God, for the technology, the cameras, the lights, everything, Father God, that you have blessed us with, Lord God. Hallelujah, glory to God, to be faithful in dispensing the word of the kingdom. Now, Father God, I ask these things in your precious name, in Jesus' mighty name. Let somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Well, once again, we want to say good morning, good morning, good morning to you, you, and you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It, it, we, it, we're going to start this morning, amen, in the book of Romans. Amen. Glory to God. And that would be Romans chapter 10 once again. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 
in Romans chapter 10, it says in verse 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, or near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. And then it goes on to verse 17 of Romans chapter 10. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen, somebody. One of the things that you must understand, amen, glory to God, if you're going to have power, amen, as a Christian, you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to have some faith. Amen. You got, if you want to have power, you must have faith. You must function in faith. Amen. Glory to God. I remember years ago, I was at a revival and uh, it was this woman, uh, she was preaching, she was an evangelist and she was preaching. This was years ago, probably close to 35 years ago. And, uh, she was, we were asked and she was, a lot of things was going on. She had a lot of miracles going on. A lot of, uh, manifestations and people were asking asked her how did you, you get this power like this and what she said was i got it from fasting well i'm gonna let you know <laughs> i don't believe that's altogether true i believe a portion of it came from fasting but the most of it but but the but the thing is it comes from faith amen and moreover faith in the word of god hallelujah the bible told us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're going to have some power, you got to have some faith. Amen. Glory to God. How does faith come once again? By hearing the word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. Anybody that's received Jesus, that's confessed him. Amen. With their mouth as their Lord and has faith in God, has and has faith in God, has had faith imparted already into their spirit. It's already there, praise the Lord. You ain't got to pray for more faith. Mm -mm. It's there. When you put the word of God in there, that faith going to come forth. Amen, glory to God. Now, we need to understand something about Jesus this morning. Amen, glory to God. When, when Jesus talked about, amen, faith, he talked about faith as if it was in fact like a, it was alive. Amen, glory to God. He talked about faith as if, as if it was alive. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matter of fact, Jesus called faith a seed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When his disciples asked him, how do you get more faith? He said, you've got to plant. Amen. You've got to plant that faith as a seed. And he says, it will grow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, and, and he said, it'll grow. He's, in other words, some people think that you've got to make the, the, the faith seed big and then plant it. No, you've got to plant what you got. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. So the question, you, you, you plant what you got and then it grows big. Amen. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 and verse 14, he said, the sower soweth the word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it, but let me back up for a second. Amen. Hallelujah. He had been teaching a parable. We call it the parable of the sower, but it's really dealing with the soil. Amen. And the seed. Amen. And in verse 11 of Mark chapter four, I, I'm going this way because the Holy Spirit is directing me that way. Amen. In ver I'll look at verse 10 of Mark chapter 4. It says, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. 
In other words, he's just given that parable about the seed. Amen. Glory to God. He said some, amen, was sown and fell by the wayside. Amen. He said the fowls came and ate it up. He said some fell on stony ground where it didn't have much earth and it, it, it came up quick, amen, because it didn't have no depth, depth of earth, he said. But then when the sun came up, it burnt that seed. It scorched it because it didn't have enough root, amen, had no root. And then he said some fell among thorns and the thorns choked it and didn't bring forth any fruit. Then he said, but other fell on good ground, amen, glory to God, and sprang, sprang up, yielded fruit, 40, it brought forth 40, some 30, I mean, it brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. And then he said, those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Let them hear. Amen. Glory to God. Now we come our, come to verse 10. It was, it's important to understand this. They wanted to understand what he was saying. Now watch what he says <clears throat> in verse 11. He, he, and he said unto them, unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. The mystery of of the kingdom of God. When he uses the word mystery, amen. He's saying this is a secret that is to be known and understood that is that will require special revelation. He's saying that I'm since you're my disciples, since you're believing on me, I'm going to reveal unto you this mystery or this secret, amen, of the kingdom of God. He says, but unto them that are without, those that are not abiding in, amen, all these things are done in parables. And then he goes on to verse 12 and says that seeing they may see and not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. A amen. Uh, uh huh. And in verse 13, he says, Know ye not this parable, and how then will ye know all parables? Pause for a second and understand what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that this parable is the alpha parable. Come on, somebody. He, ah, Shakondo, this is the alpha parable. This is the most important parable that you must receive revelation or you must understand, you must comprehend. He says, if you don't understand this particular parable, you ain't going to understand anything about the kingdom of God. A amen. He, th th this is the alpha. Yesterday, we dealt with, dealt with this alpha word. He says, if you don't know this, you ain't going to understand. No, then how, it, and how then will you know all parables? Glory to God. How will you understand the other parables? Then he breaks it down. In verse 14, he says, the sower soweth the word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The sower soweth the word. So when you're dealing with a sower is a person who plants. So he's letting you know the first thing you got to understand is you're planting the word of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Where? In your heart. The sower sought the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Amen. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. But the deal is they have no root in themselves. How do you get root in yourself? By continuing in the word. Amen, glory to God. They have no root in themselves and so endure. But for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this word and the deceitfulness of riches. And the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful, dealing with your motivations. Amen. Glory to God. And these which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some in hundred. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. So Jesus talked about faith as if it was alive. He called it a seed. 
Come on, somebody. He said you have to plant it. Amen. How do you plant it? Amen. You start with the word. The sower soweth the word. When you're ready to grow some faith, you plant the word in your heart. You study the word. You meditate on the word. You settle it in your heart that the word is the truth. The word is God. The word becomes, it becomes your alpha word. Come on, somebody. The word that you're beginning on. Hallelujah. Then faith rises up on the inside of you because faith comes by hearing, plural. That's why we go to continuing, plural, hearing the word of God. Here's the, my katana, my sanda. Some people, they bounce around too much. And, and, and that's your prerogative. They bounce around to me. Oh, I received this here. And I looked on this one. This one said this. And this one over here said that. Oh, did you hear this? They always looking for something new. And they never settle down. They never settle in. They never uh, totally immerse themselves in a truth from the word to allow deep roots. Come on, somebody. It's like the, the Bible talks about the parable of the man, the wise man who built his house on the rock. It says he dug deep. He dug deep and built his house on the rock. So that when the storms and the winds and everything beat against his house, his house stood. But the other one, they just bouncing around. They built their house on sand. They didn't dig deep enough to find bedrock. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Some people bounce around too much. Somebody was telling me the other day, oh, I got a revelation on this here. You need to read. I said, no. I said, hold on something. I said, I'm, work I'm functioning right now in two revelations. Amen. For purpose that God is my source and I'm ministering on healing. I'm getting into this because this is where God has me right now to teach the people. Now, if you want to bounce around, I, I have no, I'm not a cult leader. I have, <laughs> I have no, no authority to tell you what to study and what not to study. But as a pastor, as your pastor, I'm telling you what we're doing right now. Glory to God. You've got to dig deep, amen, glory to God. You've got to plant that word. You've got to allow that word, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, to get on the, into some good ground and have root, amen, glory to God. Root, somebody say root, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. Some people, they think they get it. They, they get a little manifestation, they get happy. But see, that's like the individual, amen, that had no root or had no depth of earth, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Somebody. Hallelujah. And so what do you do after? See, now that's the, where we're going right now. We're planting this word in our hearts. We're getting it deep in there. We're, we're getting those getting roots. Amen. We're going into the word of God. Hallelujah. Deep into the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're looking at it on, from multifaceted angles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're seeing what God is saying about, amen, how we pray, how we confess Glory to God. What's you know that is it's his will to heal us. We're developing our faith. Hallelujah. For that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what we're hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, George Jesus. We're getting that alpha word. Come on. Uh, concerning faith in us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Concerning healing. So then faith will rise up on the inside of you. Amen. Because you're hearing the word of God. So then what do you do then? You must act upon the word of God. Hallelujah. Go to Mark chapter 11. You got to act on the word of God. Mark chapter 11. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to act on it. That's how faith is released. Amen. Look at this. In verse, uh, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 20. It says, in the morning as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up by the roots dried up from the roots. Amen. And Peter calling to remember and said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree with thou curses is withered away. Here we go. Verse 22 of Mark chapter 11. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Amen, somebody. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
You know, you got to use your mouth. Amen. Whosoever shall say unto this, this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, saith, talking about continually, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So how is faith released? Glory to God. You act on the word. You speak to the mountain. You tell the problem. You tell the issue. You tell the sickness. You tell the lack. Come on, somebody. You tell the you tell it what the word says about it. Come on, somebody. You tell it in Jesus' name that it's got to move. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You tell it it does not have no choice. It's got to move. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. You tell it it's got to move. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, you've got to understand that everything you say is very important. Praise the Lord. Everything you say is important. Amen. Glory to God. It's, it's important. Let's look at what James says. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see. Let's see what James says. Amen. James chapter three. Trying to get my notes together here, y'all. James chapter 3. Everything you say is important. Hallelujah. James chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 4. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven about, excuse me, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, mm -hmm. or rudder, whithersoever, whithersoever the governor listed, or the person who's piloting the ship, wherever he wants it to go. Verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Come on, it starts a fire. Amen. Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Amen. The tongue, what you say, is very important. Amen. Everything starts, everything that happens in your life begins with it. It begins with what you say. That's why, when, since Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, when you are praying, glory to God, you must start with what the Word of God says says, the sower soweth the word. Everything happens with words, your tongue, glory to God. You, that's why you must discipline yourself by staying in the word of God. Come on, continually and developing your faith in, come on somebody, in speaking the word of God concerning whatever area you, 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 of your need, amen, glory to God, or your desire, amen, glory to God. You've got to discipline yourself. You've got to tame that tongue, amen, glory to God. There's a lot of power that is generated in your life when you choose to speak God's word and his, and, and, and his anointing and his spirit is behind what you say, amen, glory to God. Now, Jesus, amen, in John chapter 12, come on, let's go, let's go. We're coming in for a close here pretty soon. Amen. Jesus in John chapter 12. Let's go there. John chapter 12. Mm. John chapter 12. 
I'm going to start at verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but him that sent me. Now, the word sent really is a, uh, a word that where we get the word apostle or apostolic. You know, it means one, one that is sent. That sent me. In other words, now when Jesus, when we use the word sent, what we mean is a person has been thoroughly equipped for a purpose. They lack nothing in their lives or they've been equipped with everything they need to accomplish a purpose, a task. He said, so don't believe. He said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but him that sent me. And he, verse 45, and he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. The word sent is apostolos, sent, equipped, thoroughly equipped. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 46, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Come on, should not abide in obscurity, should not abide in ignorance, should not abide in moral depravity, should not abide in evil, in gloom, or come on somebody, in the night. Verse 47, if any man, are you with me? If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Verse 49, catch this. For I have not spoken of myself. He's saying, I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. Verse 50, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. It's the same for us. When we speak the word of God, we're under, come on, we're not speaking our own words. We're speaking the word of God. Therefore, we that's, that's what it means to speak in Jesus' name. We're praying in Jesus' name because we're praying by his authority. We're praying in the will of God. Come on, somebody. He says, I don't speak my own words. I say what my father tells me to say. Now, that's what you and I are supposed to do when it comes to our healing and our wellness. We're supposed to say about it what the word of God says about it. Come on. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke God's words. Now, don't try to see some people, your, 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 I don't want to go into that, but your doctrine is what has you all messed up. Amen. Glory to God. But Jesus spoke God's words. When we learn to speak what God's word says, instead of what everybody else is saying, we're going to see the same result, the same results that Jesus saw. Amen. We're not just going to see them every once in a while. We told you that you have to be consistent. As much as you are consistent, the, your manifestations will be consistent. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at something. I, 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 got, I, got, to, I got to deal with. No, no, let me keep going. And then I got to deal with some. I got to take you where the Lord took me after I finished. Amen. This uh, lesson yesterday. Amen. You see, so we've got to start going to Jesus, first of all, in every situation. Amen. Yes, we do. In every situation. First, we got to go to the word. What does the word say? I know sometimes we get, amen, hallelujah, anxious. But the Bible says be careful for nothing or anxious for nothing. But by everything with, amen, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you and believe you receive it and you have it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've got to start going to Jesus, first of all, with every situation. It's go, it, it, you you got to take time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. You've got to take the time to search out his promises that cover the situation and the circumstances. Amen. Glory to God. That's the most important thing you could do. Amen. Glory to God. You've got to search God for that alpha word. Come on, somebody. 
It's where, that's where the victory begins. Now, 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 I got to deal with something. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus' name. I'm going to put my music on, amen. Amen, glory. Now, I'm going to hold off for a second because I feel something. Amen. I, I think the Lord is going to take me somewhere. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let me see how much time I got. Okay, I got a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians. This is very important. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 15. Catch this. What is it then? Or what is the conclusion? Jesus is teaching on the spiritual gifts. Amen. He's teaching. Uh, I mean, Paul is teaching on the spiritual gift. Paul is teaching on the gift of tongues. Amen. Look what he says. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. Come on. I will pray with the spirit. Mm. And I will pray with the understanding of. Also, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Mm, mm, mm. Pause right there. Jude chapter, Jude verse 20. Let's go there. Jude verse 20. It says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me tell you something. Praise God. Now, this, I'm segueing just a little bit. Because perhaps you are not in a place where you know how to exegete the scriptures. You don't know how to rightly divide them yet. God provided a remedy for that so that you could always have victory. That's being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Oh yeah. That's why Paul said I will pray with the Spirit. Come on, somebody. I will sing with the Spirit. Jude said, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. No, no faith, no power. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What he's saying is, th there's a remedy. Be bap Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, you don't neglect understanding the word. You don't, we're not neglecting that, but we're saying perhaps you're not there yet. Oh my, she come to God. And see, for me, what I do, I start off, I'll pray in the Holy Ghost because I know the Holy Spirit is in perfect union with the word. You want to go deep? They are they in agreement. The Bible says these, they, these three agree in one. They agree, they're in perfect agreement. So I'll pray first of all in tongues and then the Holy Spirit begins to quicken my mind and my thoughts concerning what the word of God says about my situation. Come on. He guides me. He leads me into all truth as a result of praying in tongues. If you have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He told no about Receive the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Get into a setting. Go to a fellowship where they embrace the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It will revolutionize your life. Come on. It'll quicken you. That's why Jude says, building up yourself on your most holy faith. You need faith to have power. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit will quicken your mind. Glory to God. It will bring to your remembrance everything that Jesus has said. And then you can go into your body. It could be that only a portion of the verse that you need comes to your heart. That's when you get yourself a good Bible. And you look in the back of the Bible. I feel God this morning. 
into your concordance. Glory to God. And you delve and you find that scripture. You find that word that you need. Glory to God. Hallelujah this morning. You find that verse that you need. And you start speaking forth that word. This works. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You need not carry. Glory to God. That sickness. God has provided. Glory to God. He has sent you. Come on. He has, he has sent you. He has equipped you and I. He didn't leave. Come on, somebody. God did not leave us comfortless. He didn't leave us powerless. Glory to God. He sent the Holy Spirit to you and I to help us in all our endeavors. There's no reason, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, to not be victorious. There's no reason not to be an overcomer. Glory to Jesus' name. You, hallelujah, have been given everything you need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You've been given everything you need. Embrace it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Receive it. The Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. I believe right now that somebody, hallelujah. I believe that there's somebody right now I'm releasing my faith towards you. You, 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 you you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit Right now while you're watching Settle within yourself Start speaking right now Release. I call for a release of your tongue right now you start speaking in tongues. You start declaring in the spirit. In the, in, my God, hundred in it all. Shine your prayer language. Glory to Jesus' name. That's what we call tongues also. Our prayer language. You start releasing those words. You start releasing those syllables. You start releasing those sounds in the name of Jesus. How did it about Sunday? Somebody might have to pull over on the side of the road. Somebody might have to go more Sakana. Pause what the work they're doing. How did it about Shanda? He did it about Shekando Boseke. He shook Horomo no Lobo Shalamahaya. How did it about Sha? Get fluent, get fluent, get fluent, get fluent, get fluent. Continue. Glory to God. Some people say, Well, I got the Holy Ghost. I got I spoke in tongues 15 years ago. Let me tell you something about Pastor Sessam. I speak in tongues every day, several times a day, several portions of the day. I speak in tongues in the shower. I speak in tongues while I'm getting dressed. I speak in tongues. I do it. Glory to while I'm driving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I sanctify the Lord in my heart while I'm at the, the, the stop line, the stop sign. I think my I keep my mind on him. He's the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus' name. Somebody's receiving right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is in that room. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is in the room with you right now. Glory to Jesus' name. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Glory to Jesus' name. Glory to God. Somebody shout all is well in the name of Jesus. And we said, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you right now. I'm just rubbing out the Holy Ghost up in this room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, that's all Pastor Sussum has. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning in our sanctuary. Amen. Glory to God at 16681 Wood Road. That's Bethesda Revival Center in the city of Riverside, California. Amen. And I'm going to dismiss. This is how we dismiss. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the church say amen. Before I go further, I want to remind y'all to bring some bags to church. The freezer is full to capacity. There's no room for nothing in there but air. Amen. God abundantly blessed us. We have surplus. We have overflow in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.